data and information. Management of an entity relies heavily on information to make decisions to thrive the fortunes of their business. So in this episode, we are going to discuss what information is and how it is derived. So we'll start with data. These are raw facts gathered and stored, but are yet to be processed. So by processing, we are talking about sorting, analyzing, and interpreting a collected data to convey a message to management or an individual for their use in their quest of improving the performance of their entity. Okay. Examples of data can be the listing of transactions of a business. So when you do so, one cannot tell the amount of sales or purchases, capital or revenue expenditures without stress. It also does not give periodic pictures assistance. Another example can be the list of all sales transactions for a particular year. This also does not tell whether the business made a profit or a loss or the sales being an improvement to the previous year or a retrogression. Let's move on to look at sources of data. Now, data can be sourced from a primary point. By so, we mean the entity or the individual setting out to collect the data or the raw fact by themselves, or they can tax another entity to do so on their behalf. The collection exercise is strictly for the purpose identified by the business. Okay, so if they are seeking out to collect facts about gender balance on a market, that is why the activity is set out for. Thirdly, it may use tools such as meetings, observations, surveys, interviews. So if an entity wants to know the gender composition of a particular market, they can visit there themselves or tax another firm to do so. Okay. Data can also be sought from a secondary source. Here, there is the use of a pre-existing fact gathered and published by a third party. Okay. The data is originally collected for a different purpose, but has some relevance to the purpose being seek to achieve by the entity. It may also be collected via the web, journals, news portals, or government agencies. So in the example above, the business can serve the internet to ascertain the gender makeup of the market. Data also may be sourced internally, where the facts are gathered from within the circle of the business. For example, from invoices, from board minutes, from the business's own financial statement, and what have you. On the other hand, it can be gathered from an external source such as another entity's financials, internet portal, articles, etc. Now, the criteria for obtaining data lie within a vast number of interests uh, due to certain constraints such as funding, time availability, and the nature of data needed. A representative of the large interest is settled on as the data. The method of selecting the few is known as sampling. Let's take a look at the types of sampling. The first we'll be talking about is random sampling. So here the sampling is done with no defined criteria. The individual or business chooses from the population at their discretion. Therefore, every item in the population has an equal chance of making it to the sample. So the selection may be by whoever or whatever the lead person sets his or her eyes on. A second type of sampling is stratified, also known as quasi-random. Now, the selection here is done by the population first broken into groups with similar characteristics. Then, random sampling applied by picking an equal proportion from each group to reach the sample quota required. So, the population of a market may be grouped by gender, age, or residential location. So if the intended sample size is 50 and the population is grouped per gender, 25 will be randomly selected from the male group and 25 from that of the female. The third type of sampling is cluster sampling. Here, the population may be organized in clusters of groups. This group differs from the stratified one we just discussed in the sense that each group in cluster sampling 
based all the characteristics in the population and it isn't different from the other groups an example will be three classes of grade six of a school so we have grade six a grade six b grade six c all filled with brilliant average and struggling students there is no different criteria of selection into those classes another example will be 50 folders all containing sales invoices for a particular month so a cluster or clusters will be chosen and the entire makeup or the members in that cluster will be used as the sample so with the example above one out of the three classes of the grade six will be chosen and the entire student used to gather the data or the 10 of the 50 folders will be picked and the entire content used as data the next type is the systematic sampling so the sampling is made through a defined criteria the criteria could be every fourth item in an arranged population as shown in the diagram by the side lastly quota sampling so this selection is done by volunteerism up until the required quota for the sample is gotten for example 10 people being asked to step out or volunteer for a certain project anybody that comes out is chosen and used for that purpose big data so this is an extremely large set of raw facts this is particularly essential because it helps establish a pattern and trend to aid management in their decision making especially in projecting for future events we move on to discuss information after the data has been obtained it must be sorted analyzed interpreted to hold meaning to its recipient so information is therefore data process to carry knowledge so data drawn from sales can be sorted into months compared to tell whether it is in line with set targets or compared to cost to determine the movement in its margins management require good quality information to be able to make meaningful decisions to achieve the organization's goal so information must therefore bear the criteria below to be of essence the first of the criteria is that the information must be accurate meaning it must reflect the true nature of event it must not be manipulated to tell a different story to suit another person's agenda if a business didn't make a profit for a particular period the information must proceed so exactly it must also be free from material mistakes or error the second criteria is that the information must be complete meaning it must include all relevant components necessary to be meaningful if management require a three year statistics that of two years will be deemed incomplete nevertheless information must not be excessive five years process data must not be presented when that of two would have sufficed thirdly information must be cost effective the cost of obtaining the information must not outweigh the potential benefit it is to bring to the business fourthly the information must be understandable it should be easy for the recipient or management to grasp the core of the information without stress information must also be relevant that is it should be fit for purpose in other words it must carry the potential to enable the recipient or management used to meet their intended purpose so don't give information on purchases when they need sales to make an informed decision information also must be accessible it should be presented through an appropriate or feasible medium conveying an information via mail to a recipient with no or terrible internet connectivity renders that information inaccessible information must also be timely information should be presented at a period that will enable management to use to derive the necessary benefit if management needs five days to use an information to achieve a purpose and it comes in at a time that leaves management with only three then the information has failed the time test and hence not of good quality finally information must be easy to use meaning it must be presented in a format compatible for the recipient use for example it must be presented in an excel format when it 
will be lifted for further computation and analysis. Presentation of information. Information is usually presented to recipients in the form of reports. The report may be in tables as seen here. So we have the various profits for the various years listed in order. So one can tell what the business made in 2017, in 2018, in 2019, 2020 and 2021. So the business can now tell if they are making progress or otherwise to make a proper decision. Information can also be presented in charts. Okay, this is a bar chart. So you see the various years on the horizontal line, which we call the X axis, and the profits made on the vertical line, which is the Y axis. Another chart is also the pie chart, the same as the, the earlier one. This one is in the form of a circle with each year's performance shown as pi to the larger circle. Okay. Information can also be presented in graphs where the performance for years are plotted and a line drawn through to see the trajectory of the business's performance.